One of the professional hats that I wear is that I'm a first aid instructor and there's always a section on prevention of disease transmission, talking about the simple steps that we can take to protect our health. And one of those things is focusing on reasonable hand washing and making sure that in the absence of soap and water, that's when we use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. But in the absence of soap and water does not mean that the sink was all the way across the room or all the way down the hallway. Instead, it means that you were on a backwoods camping trip, there was no plumbing. Or maybe you're at a work site where there's no plumbing, it's construction, and so there's just an outhouse or something like that, a porto potty. In those cases, an alcohol-based sanitizer is a wonderful tool, but I regularly see that it is a heavily misused tool because I then watch my participants regularly dig into their bags and rub these sanitizers all over their hands while they are in a building with plumbing. This material is so heavily misused and so I wanted to make this video and the point here is to make you aware, not afraid. I do not want you to go from being afraid of germs if you are currently and then move you to being afraid of a product that was designed to deal with those germs. Instead, I want to empower you, be aware, not afraid. And if you have any questions or comments, you throw them into the comment section of this video and I will be happy to continue the conversation. What I want to empower you with today is the knowledge that there is something called a safety data sheet or a material safety data sheet for every hand sanitizer that is currently on the market. Now, this one just happens to be for Purell Advanced Instant Hand Sanitizer, whichever is your preferred sanitizer. You can hop online, go to the company's website, contact them directly, require or request the sheet. Reason for it, they are required to provide it. They cannot hide this information from you. It is a publicly available document. And so on this particular safety data sheet, I'm gonna start off with this very important statement. Intended or recommended use of the chemical and restrictions on use. It is intended as a hand sanitizer, so it's not meant to be squirted onto surfaces like your steering wheel or sprayed onto the handle of a grocery cart. This is designed for your hands. This is a personal care or cosmetic product that is safe for consumers and other users under normal and reasonably foreseeable use. Cosmetics and consumer products specifically defined by regulations around the world are exempt from the requirement of a safety data sheet for the consumer. Reason for it, cosmetics, if I sell you lipstick, I'm assuming you're not gonna eat it. I'm assuming you are going to use it properly, and by using it properly, you will therefore not be at any risk of harm. So while this material is not considered hazardous, the safety data sheet contains valuable information critical to the safe handling and proper use of the product for industrial workplace conditions, as well as unusual and unintended exposures such as large spills. If you buy this product from a pharmacy or a grocery store, it is considered a cosmetic product. But the second it is introduced to a workplace, it is now considered a chemical in the workplace, which means the employer is required to provide a safety data sheet on it. And once we get a hold of this, looking at it through the lens of, well, it's in my workplace, it's a chemical I interact with, what do I need to know about it? Ah, uh, some light starts to be shone on some issues, including the following precautionary statements. I've highlighted here the ones that are pertinent uh, that I believe, you know, highlight and uh, help us to navigate, you know, am I using the product correctly or incorrectly? The precautionary statements, it recommends washing your skin thoroughly after handling. Alcohol-based sanitizers are not meant to be left on your skin. Along with that, if on skin or hair, it's recommended that you take off immediately all contaminated clothing, rinse skin with water and shower. Going on, I've uh, removed any sheets that aren't directly pertinent, so again, get your hands on the documents yourself. Read through the entire material. I'm just highlighting here, highlight reel. Advice on safe handling. Do not breathe vapors or spray mist. Do not swallow. Do not get in eyes. It's a hand sanitizer, not an eye sanitizer, but then look at this. Avoid prolonged or repeated contact with skin. It is not meant to be left on your skin for hours on end. It is not meant to be used on a regular basis. This is not for use in a school or in your workplace or in your home where you have plumbing. This is intended for use at public events where there is no plumbing. It's just rows of Johnny on the spots. It is intended for backwoods camping. What a great context to use it in. But if you have access to plumbing, that is incorrect use of an alcohol-based sanitizer. And in fact, you are going against the advice on safe handling by using it on a regular basis in those contexts. We then see the statement, handle in accordance with good industrial hygiene and safety practice. Industrial hygiene referring to reasonable washing of hands. 
and so or as part of the overall picture of hygiene and so and sorry that's cut off at the bottom there my printer is responsible for that as we go on we then see hand protection material now providing context because this isn't meant to be a sensationalist video um, I want you to be aware, not afraid. Hand protection material is also including scenarios where perhaps there's been a spill, the person has been exposed to the chemical in a much higher amount than they ever reasonably you know, would have chosen to res um, expose themselves to. And so we see that maybe you know, this is a larger quantity, but all the same, we note that the tools needed for handling the chemical are gloves that do not allow the chemical to get to you. Choose gloves to protect hands against chemicals depending on the concentration specific to place of work. And then we see the note, wash hands before breaks and at the end of the work day. Washing your hands before a break. A break is generally used for consuming food, water. Your hands are going to be near your mouth or in your mouth if you lick your fingers. Knowing that, it's recommended that you remove the chemical before you potentially expose yourself in that manner. The final thing I'll show you in this particular safety data sheet, they've summed up their assessment of the risk to you uh, by creating this very helpful little chart. They're focused on special hazards, health, flammability, instability, and the health category, how much of a risk do they consider this chemical to be to you? They consider it to be a level two, and level two, I've highlighted there for you, is considered to be moderate. Is that extreme? No. But is it not significant? No, there are some concerns with using this product. And so I just want to empower people because I see it being used way too often and people being afraid of touching so many things when in the end you can touch almost anything on this planet. Just don't lick it. Um, your skin is like human Tupperware. It keeps good things in, bad things out. If you are taking reasonable care of your immune system by eating healthy, being active, getting a good night's sleep, your immune system kicks butt. It destroys so many things. And so we don't have to be afraid of germs. We can be aware of them and take simple precautions like washing our hands at reasonable times after going to the bathroom, before eating food. Um, and with that in mind, only using alcohol-based hand sanitizers in the absence of the ability to wash our hands with soap and water. So please, if you've got it in your school, start a conversation and see if you can get it out of there. If you've got it in your workplace, see if you can start a conversation and get it out of there. If you have access to soap and water in your own home, for goodness sakes, put it in your camping gear, but in your kid's backpack, your purse, get it out of there. Um, Please, if you can spread the information to help put this amazing product, which is being horribly misused on a regular basis, back into its proper context, um, then we can enjoy the benefits of it without experiencing the negative impacts of exposing ourselves to a chemical, which has been considered a moderate hazard to our health. Um, so with that, by all means, please join the conversation, share your thoughts, ask your questions. I'll be happy to engage. And please, you know, go to the companies themselves that provide these uh, products and therefore provide the safety data sheet. Don't just look at it as a cosmetic product. Look at it as a chemical that you are choosing to use and make sure that you are using it safely. Know the big picture. So thank you very much for watching this video and I hope that was helpful to you. All the best. Bye.